Oh, hey. You know, when I want a snack, it feels so simple. You go to the kitchen, grab it, eat it. But do you ever think about just how many people were involved in getting, say, this apple to this fridge, making it, moving it, paying for it? Hmm. You may have heard that grocery bills have been getting more expensive. Adults in your life might be talking about inflation and rising costs, but what is that all about? I'm Sara Chaudhary and this is Kayan Explains Rising Food Prices. In December, Canada's Food Price Report for 2022 came out. It's put out by a research team from four universities across Canada. This year's report is significant because it's predicting the highest increase in grocery costs since the first report was published for the year 2010. The report predicts that by the end of 2022, the typical Canadian family of four will have to spend $966.08 more on groceries than they did in 2021 just because of price increases. So why are food prices going up now? To better understand, I spoke to two experts, Simon Samoji, an economist who led one of the research teams that contributed to this year's food price report, and Carol McOsland, an economist at the University of British Columbia who studies food and the environment. Okay, so let's dig in. One word that comes up a lot is inflation, but what does it mean? Well, inflation is a term that comes from economics. If prices are higher today than, say, a year ago, that means your dollar can buy less than it did last year. That is inflation. It applies to all goods and services, including food, and it's usually tracked as a percentage. The 2022 report is predicting food price inflation of 5 to 7% compared to last year. Now, I know that might not seem like a lot, but as economist Carol McOsland points out, over time... Well, it adds up pretty quickly. And for a lot of people, prices are increasing much faster than wages, meaning people have to pay more for things, but they aren't necessarily getting a pay raise to help fill the gaps. To explain why food is getting more expensive, let's first try to understand how food prices are decided to begin with. Okay, so let's use this apple from my fridge as an example. Well, first off, the apple, like all products we buy, have to be made, or I guess in this case, grown. This apple came from St. Catharines, Ontario, where it was grown on a farm. That farm then sold this apple, along with thousands of other apples, to another business who grades them, packages them, and then sells the higher grade apples to retailers like grocery stores. But some of those apples then get transported to the store and put out on the shelves, where the apples can finally get into the hands of the consumer who, in this case of the apple, was my mom. <laughs> All of that so I could have a nice mid-filming snack. <laughs> At each point along the journey, there are costs that add up. And on top of those costs, each business has to make money. To keep up, as costs go up a lot on one end, prices follow, leading to higher grocery bills. The COVID-19 pandemic is one of the reasons for increased costs. It's made it harder to find enough workers and it has affected supply chains all over the world. You can learn more about supply chains in my last Hay and Explains video. Another reason food prices keep going up? Climate change. Weather is a big component of agriculture and climate change has meant more wacky and difficult weather conditions like floods, droughts, hurricanes. Last summer, a heat wave hit the prairies and devastated crops like wheat. That's a big part of why baked goods, like bread, have been getting more expensive according to the food price report. I guess the projection is we might be moving to a new normal in which we're going to have more of these extreme uh, weather events more often. And wheat isn't just used to make food for humans. It's also used to feed animals. 
animal feed prices going up means that the cost to produce animal products goes up too. Dairy is expected to be one of the categories with the highest price increase in 2022, and meat is already one of the more expensive items at the grocery store. Okay, so there's a lot going on when it comes to food costs and prices, and we've only just scratched the surface. But why does this all matter? So going back to the prediction, $966 increase in the family grocery bill. For some, that much spread over a year might not seem like a lot, but... The higher food costs to particularly impact those with lower salaries, particularly women, uh, indigenous people, people of color. This historic rise in food prices is a threat to food security and could mean more Canadians will become food insecure. Food insecurity means not having regular and reliable access to enough nutritious food. According to the 2018 census, 4.4 million Canadians were considered food insecure, 1.2 million of them children. The most food insecure place in Canada is Nunavut, where as of 2018, 57% of the population experience food insecurity. That's why we turned to Rachel Blaze. I'm the executive director here at Kaikvik. A community food center in Iqaluit that provides free meals, education programs, and advocates for food sovereignty, which is the... Right for people to have access to healthy, affordable food that's also culturally appropriate. So what are some solutions or potential responses to food costs rising? One suggestion is for people to budget, with many financial experts sharing tips on how Canadians can shop for deals and change their habits to save money. Another tip, be less wasteful. And so we've got about 40% of what we grow ends up in the bin. McGoslin says that things like best before dates, which are required by law to appear on many food items, can be misleading. Often those things are just fine after the best before date. She says more education could help prevent people tossing perfectly good food, which is good for the environment and also good for the wallet. While those tips might be practical for some Canadians, for people already struggling to pay for the basics. Budgeting more on an individual level often means having less nutrients in your diet. Um, and that isn't a solution to food insecurity. That isn't the solution to the rising costs of, of food across the country. So what about food banks? Well, food banks do help vulnerable communities. And as more Canadians struggle to put food on the table, many food banks say they will need even more support from individuals and the government. But it's not necessarily a long-term solution. Addressing food insecurity has to go beyond food banks and soup kitchens because that doesn't really do anything to address the root cause of the issue. It's just treating the symptom of it. McGosland says that as an economist, she doesn't recommend price controls. That would keep food prices at a certain level, but that the government can get involved in other ways. Both Blaze and McGosland say that one way to make up for the lack of affordability is for the government to provide income support. Things like universal basic income or other types of assistance given directly to Canadians who need it. Blaze also says the government can help support local food systems and do more to address poverty, like providing more affordable housing. It's important to understand uh, how we eat and where we eat our food from. Um, but don't worry too much, prices fluctuate and if they come up, they come down. There are people all over the country fighting for that, to make sure that every single Canadian has access to healthy food all the time. So it turns out that food is way more complicated than just grabbing an apple from the kitchen. Huh. Which makes me want to cherish each bite just a little bit more. For CBC Kids News, I'm Sara Chaudhry, and this has been KN Explains. To explain this complicated topic, we turned to research and experts. So thank you to Rachel Blaze, Carol McGosland, and Simon Samoji for your interviews.
sources. I also used past reporting by the CBC and Radio Canada and information from the Dalhousie University's Agri-Food Analytics Lab, Feed Ontario, Community Food Centers Canada, and the Bank of Canada.